Okay, this is Mark Summers again from Summers Technical Services. Uh, we talked about the datums, datum simulators, and how to define those datums on your part. Now we're going to move to SolidWorks and see how to add those datums on the drawing and also get our datum C that we talked about using that feature size idea. So let's get started. So here is our part model. I'm going to give you this part model to start with and you'll find that the dimensioning I use may or may not be conducive to making a fabrication drawing. It worked out good for the design, uh, but not so much maybe for the manufacturing drawing. So you may or may not use all these dimensions on here, and if you have some you need and don't have, you can always just add them in the drawing. So I've got the model open, so I'm gonna start a new drawing. Make sure you choose the right template so you get a one-to-one -one scale. It looks nice. There's my part I've got open, and I can create, I think I want a top view to start with. That's kind of my primary view is the most descriptive view of uh, my part. And I, right off the bat, I don't like this orientation. I want this thing to be rotated 90 degrees. And I can do that by selecting the view and doing a right click, zoom pan, rotate, and I can rotate the view, say, 90 degrees. And that looks better. So you, you can do that if you want to. If not, it's fine too. But I think I'll have more room in my drawing if I do it this way. So I think I want this guy here. I want to take a section view through those holes. So maybe I'll come in here and do a section view. View layout, section view. Uh, it's guessing the right orientation. I want to go right through that hole and then place that view. Uh, something I didn't talk about last time, but the hatch, the cross hatching sometimes looks weird to me and what it's trying to do is give you the crosshatch symbol based on the material and if you're doing architectural drawings you'll have cross sections for concrete and a different one for sheet metal or excuse me for uh, sheet rock and other building materials but for mechanical drawings I just like to have the regular crosshatch I don't have a whole lot of different crosshatch things in a big assembly so you can turn off this material crosshatch if you select the crosshatch it gives you. Uh, the default is it gives you the material crosshatch. I'll turn that off and I usually like to assign this uh, ANSI 31. That just gives me that nice 45 degree angle that uh, I like. So maybe that looks good and then maybe I'll have another view, I'll do another projected view down here. And then, of course, I probably want an ISO view just because I like ISO views. Put him up in the corner. If I choose the right button. All right, so maybe I'm on my way here with my views. So now let's talk about putting datums on here. So under annotation, there's a button here for putting in datums right here. Datum feature. And it starts off with datum A, and so I can define datum A either here or down here. And maybe I'll decide to put it down here. So I'll click that edge and then place the datum. And then I need datum B, which is this face right here. Well, I can't see it here. Can't even see the door, so maybe I have to put it right here. So there's datum B. Now that's defined. And now datum C, I need to define as the center line or the center plane between these two faces. And so I first need to get my dimensions on here, and then I can use that dimension that defines that distance as a feature of size and use it to define my datum. So let me go with model items and do my regular thing. Uh, the first shot, I always do entire model and say OK. All right, so I got a bunch of dimensions. They're duplicates. Some of them I need to delete. That one right there I need to delete. Some of these other ones. Uh, but this is the one I want right here. This is the one I want to refer to. So I want to let you guys figure out how to get these other dimensions looking good. But this is the dimension that's going to define my uh, datum C. And so this is a feature of size because it's dimensioning to two opposing faces. And so the, this dimension right here uh, that's the overall part width. Uh, but anything that has opposing faces can be considered a feature of size. 
And so this could be a feature of size, this could be a feature of size. This dimension right here is, let's shift drag him up here so we can see what it is. That dimension is, that dimension between here and here. I'm trying to find one that's not a feature of size. So let's do this. Let me just throw one on here for fun. So that dimension right there, that one I just added, that is not a feature of size because it's dimensioning between this face and this face, and those aren't opposing. They're going the same direction. And so this would not be a feature of size, and we could not use that to define a datum. So even a hole diameter, you could have a hole diameter. That could be a feature of size, and that could define a datum. So the takeaway is any feature of size, which is a dimension that dimensions to opposing faces, can be considered a feature of size. So I can use this to add my C datum, and so the way I'll do that is go datum feature. I will uh, default to the next letter, which is good. Oops, I guess I had something selected. Mm, datum feature. I'm going to grab this edge. I'm going to grab that dimension, I think. Nope. Let's try that again. Datum feature. I wanted to come off of that face right here. Mm, it's not working for me. Datum feature. Here we go. Not sure why that thing is rotating around. Here we go. Well, this is not much fun. I need to have it coming vertical. And it wants to lay down right there. That's not what I want. I want this to be lined up. I want it to be going vertical. And I want it to be lined up horizontally with this. Let's try it one more time here. Go back to C. Let's place it in open space here and then see if I can't drag it down. Here we go. There we go. So I just place it out there in space and there it is. So now that datum C, what I had to make sure is it's tied to that dimension. So this is very much different than this. So I'll place D out here. That is very much different than C. Datum C defines the theoretical center between these two faces, which is this center line right here. Center line between those two faces. The way I've defined datum C is this center line right here. It goes through the middle of the middle of those two features. So this datum C implies this is datum C. This datum D defines this feature here is datum D, which is obviously different than what I want. So this is what you want right here. So I just wanted to put this under to show you what not to do. So it took a couple of tries there, so uh, now we got it. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out which ones of these features need to be located using these datums. Because to do that, you need a feature control frame. And for holes, it's generally the positional characteristic. So what we're going to do is locate these two holes with a positional GD&T characteristic. And we need three things to do that. If you don't have all three things, then it's completely nonsensical. You need datums. You need a feature control frame that defines the characteristic you're trying to define. And the third thing is you need basic dimensions. Because the this is the important part. The positional tolerance of the location of the holes does not come from the dimensions. 
it comes from the feature control frame. So let's just do it and see if this doesn't make sense. So that put a center mark on these two holes, which is what I want to do. And what I'm going to do now is add some dimensions for these holes. And I know I've got those dimensions in here. If I go model items. I want to do whole wizard locations for a selected feature. And I want this guy right here. So now I've got my dimension I want, which is here and here. These are the these are the vertical dimensions that locate those two holes. There it is right there. So I want to be concentrated on these two guys right here. And I'm also going to be concentrating on this hole right here. And I need to locate these holes. I have to locate every feature that's defined with a feature control frame from the datums. And so this one is located from the datums vertically. Here's the datum. Here's a dimension that goes here to here. And then this dimension goes here to here. So these two are well-defined locations for the vertical location. And they're located from datum C. Those dimensions that locate those holes have to be basic dimensions. And a basic dimension is defined as a dimension that has no tolerance. It's perfect. It's the target position where the machinist is going to try to hit that hole. And the target is perfection. Because the dimensions are coming off something that's perfect, which is the datum. And you're dimensioning it from the datum with a dimension that's got no tolerance. It's perfect. So that's not where they're going to drill it. That's where they're going to try to drill it. And they're going to miss it by some amount. And that's going to be the positional tolerance. So to make dimensions basic, you just select them and choose basic. And it puts a little box around them. And that tells everybody that looks at this drawing that that's a basic dimension. And it has no tolerance. If you don't have a basic dimension symbol around it, then the tolerance comes from the title block. And so a good quiz question would be, what's the tolerance of that dimension? And the answer is zero. It's perfect. Now I need a dimension going side to side to locate those holes. This dimension is not dimensioning from the datum B. It's dimensioning from some magical spot off the part. So I can't use that one. I want to put a dimension between datum B and that hole. And I need to put a smart dimension in here, what I call a dumb dimension, because there's not one right now. So I'm going to go here to here. I can grab that center mark. Right click, select other. I want to go to the center mark. And there's a dimension right there. That needs to be a basic dimension as well. And there's two of them. There's one off of B to get to this hole. And there's another one to get to B off of this hole. So this should be 2x as well. Now I've got two out of the three things I need. I've got datums that locate those holes. I've got basic dimensions that locate the holes from the datums. And now I need the third thing. This is the trifecta, I call it. Datums, basic dimensions, and I need a feature control frame. And so this is you do this with this button right here, geometric tolerance. And this builds the feature control frame for you. You just answer questions left to right and then place it. So the first thing is picking a symbol. And we'll go through these symbols. There's 13 of these symbols. And we'll talk about these different ones in class. One we're going to use is position, which is this one. And it pops it in the box there. Tolerance, we'll say positional tolerance of maybe five thousandths. Determining the value you put in here is really beyond the scope of the course. You'll learn that in a subsequent class. So we'll pick a number, 10 thousandths, 20 thousandths, whatever you think. And this tolerance zone is going to be a diameter. It's going to be a circle tolerance zone, circular tolerance zone. So I need to add a diameter symbol in front of that. Now we move over to the tolerance. Oh, we got tolerance, diameter of 0.5, uh, 5 thousandths. Primary datum we're going to type in is A. That was the first datum we defined. There's datum B, secondary datum. And then the tertiary datum is the third datum that we're going to define. And we're going to define them in that order. A first, like we did in the previous video. A first, then B, then C. And that's it. And don't click OK. Just come over here and place it on the uh, one of the holes. 
and then place it on the on the on the on the window there. So there you go. Now I did one thing wrong though. This needs to be tied to the whole call out, and so I should have put the whole call out on there first. So let's go back and do that and redo this. Let's kill this guy. Get those notes out of the way. All right, let's go in here to model items. Uh, I need to go ask for the whole call out. Should have done this first. Selected feature, boom. There's that nice whole call. Look at that nice whole call out. Isn't that beautiful? Diameter 0.150. That's the that's the through hole. It's counter bore for a number six socket head cap screw, so it I must have chose a close fit or normal fit. Uh, and there's the diameter of the counter bore, and there's the depth. So all that's built in. Now I can do my feature control frame again. Geometric tolerance. Symbol is going to be position. Tolerance, I said, maybe I'll make it ten thousandths. Add the diameter. Datums are A, B, and C. And again, don't click on the screen. You can see a preview of it. Don't click on the screen or say OK. Click that note, click that whole call out, and that'll tie it to the whole call out. So now this thing moves together. Now I've got the trifecta. I've got datums, I've got basic dimensions, and I've got my feature control frame. So in addition to doing that, I want you to also pick a couple of different characteristics, flatness, perpendicularity, parallel, some other characteristic, and I want you to put two or three additional GDNT callouts on your drawing. And I'll let you decide as a designer which one of those are most important. And I'll help you about help you uh, in class with that. So the rest of the dimensions you can do, you know how to do that already. Fill out your title block, fill out the revision block, and fill out the uh, material uh, based on the material that I assigned to you in class. So I think that will get us to the end of assignment five, and you can uh, ask any additional questions during class. So until next time, uh, we'll see you in the next video.